Welcome back again. Uh, today we're going to be playing around with some uh, UI kit components. Uh, also going to be doing some hands-on stuff with UI kit. The chapter that you should have read before coming into today uh, in the book was uh, chapter four. Uh, this one was called More User Interface Fun. Uh, the example that you did in this chapter is probably one of the most important um, to a beginner uh, just because it's got so many like easy to use UI features in it, right? Like once you get this chapter, you've got so many new tools uh, under your belt and they're easy to use. Um, it's really the most bang for your buck out of any example. <clears throat> Just kind of look at it real quick. Um, if you haven't done this, stop the video now, go do the chapter four um, example, then come back. Um, all right, so assuming you've done it, uh, there are a lot of pieces in here. The first thing they added is they added a UI image view. Uh, these are very popular for uh, getting images into your uh, app. It's really easy to do. You can just stick an image right on there. Uh, they've also got some labels, uh, and then they started playing with UI text fields. We're going to play with some text fields in our example today as well. Uh, text fields are the primary way to get text input into an app. After that, it goes on and shows you a little bit about a slider. Sliders are handy. They're easy to use. Um, and then it displayed the value of the slider and a label. I uh, showed you the segment control. Uh, segment control can be a handy thing. It's nice for like even multiple options. Uh, the segment control switched between showing two switches uh, that are just nice binary on-offs um, or showing a button. So it showed just the button. Other things that it showed that I didn't have in this list is it also showed the um, text, uh, I'm sorry, the alert view, um, and it also showed the action sheet, uh, which was kind of neat. going to talk about the action sheets on the next slide. Also with the action sheet, it kind of introduced uh, very, very casually um, a really important concept, and that's delegates. So a couple of the things that it did, we're going to talk about delegates a ton um, in this course, but... Um, this is just kind of a, a quick little teaser uh, to seeing what a delegate's all about. The three things that were important um, in implementing this delegate, uh, the control fund view controller, you can see that it implemented a protocol. Um, so it claimed, I implement the UI action sheet delegate protocol. So that was step one. Um, a protocol is exactly like an interface in Java. It's just a list of functions, and I say that I implement those. So it's an agreed-upon contract for what the names of the methods are going to be called. And then this second chunk here, this is, is deep within um, <coughs> clicking the button. Um, the important line here is this one right here. It's really a little bitty. It says delegate colon self. Um, so what that has done is this action sheet is an object. Um, and it's now got a delegate, which is the view controller. And so what that means is anytime there's a delegate method that needs to get called, like when it appears, when it disappears, when a button's clicked, things like that, it's going to inform the view controller, uh, which is its delegate. The one function um, from this protocol that uh, the view controller implemented is called action sheet did dismiss with button index. So when you click a button, um, it calls the view controller. So delegates, we're going to use a ton uh, there's a little tease here about how to use delegates, um, and they're really easy to use, but they're they're just all over the place <clears throat> when you start doing your uh, iOS programming. Uh, so those are the things that were in that chapter. Uh, for a full list um, of all the things in UI Kit, I'm not sure how well this image comes across, but there are a lot of classes inside UI Kit. Um, I mean, there are things that start off here with acceleration and accelerometer you, know, you can probably guess what those are about um, UI device uh, you can use that to get orientation UI fonts um, UI gesture recognizer these are some more more recent additions uh, UI image this is one that is used all the time uh, for any type of uh, usually PNG image um, screen screen mode um, all kinds of great things the ones that we're gonna focus on um, kind of follow this path. So there's an NS object, um, and then there's a UI responder. Um, and then the path that we're most interested in for now uh, goes to UI view. 
UI view, I would probably say, is, is one of the most important like objects in Objective-C. Um, obviously, you're going to spend most of your time writing code in a UI view controller subclass. Um, but I think UI view, because that's the part that makes things visible, um, if I had to pick like the most important class, it'd be that one. Obviously, no, no one class functions without the others. So, um, Coming off UI view, you can see that there are a ton of things. Um, so anything that's visible on the screen um, is pretty much going to come off of UI view. There's a couple um, up here with bar items that are visible, but most of the visible things come off UI view. Um, so there are lots of subclasses of UI view. Um, so for example, label is just a direct subclass. Um, <clears throat> and then some other things that we're going to use today, um, we're going to use a UI text view. Uh, this one's actually a subclass of a scroll view because you can move it up and down. Uh, table view, we'll get to that one. When we get to table views, we're going to hit it hard and heavy, so you're going to learn a lot about table views. Um, but then the path that we're still most concerned about is this UI control um, and all the different UI controls that there are. Um, so we're focusing our, our study kind of on these objects. Um, so these are ones that are covered in Chapter 4. Um, and then you can see I added uh, text views to this list. Um, so these are the ones that we really care about. And so just kind of before we hop into today's example, I wanted to talk about, you know, a UI button, for example. It's a subclass of a UI control, which is a subclass of a UI view, which is a subclass of a UI responder, which is a subclass of NS object. So a UI button... The things that a UI button can do is it can do anything that's in its own class, um, and it can also do anything that a control knows how to do, a view knows how to do, a responder knows how to do, or an object knows how to do. So let's talk just really briefly about what these different steps are. Um, you can also see for people that aren't controls, um, they won't have um, all the control features, right? And if you look at this, you can see like a UI label um, is not a type of control, so it won't have the touch up inside and things like that. Same with the text view, it won't have a touch-up insert or anything like that, uh, but these guys will. So just kind of going from top to bottom, uh, what, what do you get because you're an NS object? So since you're a subclass of an NS object, the things that an NS object does for you is it's kind of the base object. All other objects are subclasses of NS object. So some things that you get by being an NS object is you're able to have a description um, so this is exactly like Java's toString method. Um, so this is just if you want to print out something to like a console log, um, everything has a description. You can overwrite it to get a better description, uh, but by default you will get something. It'll just tell you where the pointer is at in memory and what type of op what type of class it is. Is equal. Um, you know it's used for uh, testing things with equality. Is kind of class, is member of class. Um, you can test to see if it if it fits certain criteria that you're looking for. Responds to selector is nice. Everything is nice and dynamic um, in Objective-C. You can see if something will respond to a selector before you call it. Because uh, if you call it and it doesn't respond, um, then it's going to crash, right? So any anytime you're not sure, um, you can always check first. Uh, and then these four are huge. <clears throat> this has to do with memory management. Um, the idea of memory management, just real briefly, is when you create an object, um, it gets a retain count of one. Um, and then every time somebody cares about that object, the retain count increases. So like if you put it in an array, the retain count will hop up to two. Um, if you put it onto the view of the screen, the retain count would hop up one more. Um, and there's a lot with memory management that we're going to learn about, uh, but not today. Um, so if you're... Uh, in this object, you get those things. Um, the next thing in the line is UI Responder. UI Responder is all about things that can receive touches. So if you're a subclass of UI Responder, um, then you're going to implement all the touch methods. So touches began, touches moved, touches ended, and touches canceled. Um, we're going to get into dealing with custom touches directly um, in later, later in the course, uh, but not today. Also inside UI Responder is this uh, Resign First Responder. Uh, you saw that this was important in Chapter 4 because if something is the first responder, it's going to be the first one to respond to inputs. This is mainly important when it comes to uh, text fields um, because it brings up the keyboard. Um, and if you want the keyboard to go away, 
that object has to resign first responder. Uh, next one on the list was UI view. Uh, UI view is for drawing, um, so things that are visible in your application are UI views. UI views end up um, becoming sub-views um, of another view. So for example, the first UI view is always a UI window. Um, UI window is a subclass of UI view. So you'll start with a window and then you'll put onto that another view. Um, so for example, in Hello World, the next one we put on is we put on the view controllers view. Um, and then you'd put onto that like you'd put on a UI label. So a UI label is a type of view. Um, and so these are the things that know how to be drawn. Um, you can see in the text there's a little hint for other things you can do. Um, so UI views always have a super view, um, except for the window. Everything has a super view. Um, and then they've also got sub views. Um, and by default, the sub view, um, think of it as an array. It might be empty, right, if there's no, no sub views of it. Um, and then each one has a frame and a bounds, um, and we'll talk more about that when we uh, <clears throat> when we get into talking about views more in detail. Then the last kind of uh, important superclass in the chain is UI control. Uh, what they've done with UI control is they've used those touch events, those touches began, touches moved, touches ended, touches canceled, um, and they've made certain touch control events uh, out of those. The ones that we use the most are touch up inside. We use that one a ton uh, with buttons in particular. Um, touch down, we're going to use that one in today's example. Um, that's like when your finger first goes down, um, it calls that, uh, that action. Value changed, value changed is something that we used with the color slider, uh, with sliders. You'd also use value changed with a switch um, or value changed with a segment control. And then another type of UI control is did end on exit, um, and you'll use those with the text fields. So here are some subclasses of UI control, um, and you can see that these subclasses really make use of all these standard control events. Um, and then when you get down into one of the specific classes, um, it will also have things it can do. Um, here I picked button as an example. You can see that button, it says in the, in the class reference that it inherits from UI control, that's its, that's its immediate super, super class, which inherits from UI view, which inherits from UI responder, which inherits from NS object. Um, it also conforms to some protocols, but we'll get to these later. Um, and then, of course, the button has specific things for it, right? So it's got a button type property. Um, it's got things like setting the title for a state. Um, you can read the title for a state. Um, it's got the background image, uh, setting the background image, um, things like an image view that you can work with. So there are all kinds of specific things for that object. So kind of getting an idea of how these things work um, and understanding how it uses inheritance um, to make it work and only have code in one place. Um, you know, it's an important, important thing to know. So I've talked more than I like to talk. Um, and so really, I learned by example. Um, I hope you do too. So let's do an example already. So what we're going to play with today is we're going to play with um, <clears throat> the first part of a scorekeeper. Um, so we're going to start up a, an app called Scorekeeper. Scorekeeper is contained within the Lab 1 document. So if you wanted to see some of this information, you can click on Lab 1. Um, and then it, you can see some information about the Scorekeeper app. The Scorekeeper app, it's the idea is, let's say you're trying to keep score for a four-person card game. Uh, so you've got four people that are playing a card game and you want to keep score. Um, so like in my example here, I'm, I'm playing the card game Hearts um, and keeping score. Uh, you could also use it with a two-player game. You know, you just kind of leave three and four blank. So the idea is you enter a score for like that round, like that round of playing cards. Um, and then you click on Enter Scores and it will tabulate that row um, of totals. And then, you know, the next round you'll put in the scores and you can hit enter scores and it'll tabulate that row of scores. By default, it'll say player one, player two, player three, player four, but you can change that um, in this app uh, to read something specific. Uh, you can also reset, uh, which would bring everybody back to zero. Um, and just like before, we want you to get practice making universal apps. Um, so we're going to set this up as a universal app. 
Um, we'll be nice to you. Today we'll go ahead and start you off in a universal app uh, to help get you started. Uh, if you like icons, uh, you can go ahead and click on the uh, icon files um, and you can download those if you like. Uh, so if we download the icon files, um, they'll just be inside Finder. Um, and then if you double click on it, uh, which looks like I've already done it once, um, you can bring up the icon files. You can see that there's a 57 by 57, um, a 72 by 72, um, and then this one is a 114 by 114. And they already have the special names, um, so all we have to do is add them to our project, um, and then we'll get these little icons. Cool, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so go ahead and open up Xcode. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do some steps you should be very familiar with at this point. Um, we're going to go ahead and start a new project. We're going to go ahead and start it as a universal project. Um, and we're going to go ahead and call it uh, Scorekeeper. Um, I think I've already made this once, so I might need to call mine something different. I'll call mine Scorekeeper Video. Uh, just call yours Scorekeeper. Uh, you can see that I recently updated to 4.1 uh, that came out just before I filmed this video, so I'm allowed to have it be part of videos. Um, with 4.1, um, you're still using you know, the Xcode um, <clears throat> 3.2, um, so Xcode 4 is not publicly available at the time of this recording. Uh, when you click on a universal app, you've got your iPhone stuff, your iPad stuff, um, you've got your shared information. Um, and so we're going to start off by um, adding stuff to this project to get it up and running. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, my icons. Uh, so I like icons. I think they're fun. So I'm going to go to my downloads. Um, I'm going to add these two. Um, if you want to make it for a high res, you also need to include that one. Uh, I'm going to copy them in. Um, and I mean, just like that, uh, the icon should work, right? So if I say build and run... Uh, the program won't do anything. It'll just be a nice blank screen. Um, but if you close it, it should already say, um, show the icon and say the bundle name. But let's go ahead and fix that name. I didn't like that name. Um, so in your info.plist, um, so the bundle display name, let's call it score space keeper. You'll find I very rarely call my projects. I, I rarely, I, I just don't have spaces in my project names. Um, but in my name on the, that shows up on the screen, I want the, the space, right? So I typically change the bundle display name like every time. Um, and I think icons make things look so much prettier. I don't know why. I just like icons. So let's get started with this guy. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and make the iPhone version um, of this app. Um, and then we'll leave you the iPad version for you to do on your own. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to get up a single view um, on the iPhone. Um, what I would love for you to do is I'd love for you to see if you can make this yourself. Um, so we're going to need to do things like we're going to need to make um, a view controller subclass. Uh, I'm going to call it scorekeeper view controller. And so scorekeeper view controller. Um, is um, going to be one class and then we're going to have two zip files uh, for it. So we're going to say make a zip file uh, for an iPhone and just call this one scorekeeper view underscore iPhone and then we'll just go ahead and get you started on the iPad version. We'll go ahead and make the file at least and so we'll say score Keeper view iPad. Cool. So let's go ahead and start making some connections in this. I would love for you to try to do it on your own. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this by yourself. All right. So I'll go ahead and do it as well now. Um, so what I want, want to do is I want to um, do the code first. It doesn't really matter what order of operations you do these things in. Uh, just because they all need to get done at some point. Uh, so the first thing that I do in the code is I'm going to need a pointer uh, to the instance that I'm going to create an interface builder. So at this point I've got a pointer uh, to that um, instance that I'm going to make an interface builder. 
Next, I'm going to go ahead and make that object. Um, so make that instance. So um, whenever this app launches, it's going to launch in the iPhone, the main window iPhone. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to actually drag over a view controller. I don't like that view as well. I'm going to keep my descriptions on. Uh, but I don't want to make a view controller. I actually want to um, make a score keeper view controller. Uh, so I clicked on it and I hit Command 4 and I changed its class to score keeper view controller. And since this one's from the iPhone, I want to go ahead and load the scorekeeper view iPhone nib file uh, whenever I want to bring up its view. And then inside the app delegate, um, I want to connect the root view controller pointer um, to this instance that I created. So at that point, um, this pointer now points to something useful. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to come into my implementation file. And I'm going to go ahead and add that class. Um, I'm going to synthesize the property. And then on the window, I'm going to add the subview. Um, so I'm going to add this view controller's view. And because I want to keep up with good practice, I'm going to release it at the bottom. Cool, so at this point I've made the object um, and I've added its view to the window, so those things are good. Uh, next we're going to go in and we're going to fix the zip file up just a little bit. Uh, the first thing you want to do is whenever you create a zip file of your own, uh, you're going to have to change the file's owner type. Uh, this thing is owned by um, the scorekeeper view controller. Uh, when I say it's owned by, that's like, that's the object that, that launched it, that brought it into existence. Um, whenever you change the file's owner type, you have to reconnect the view. Um, and then on the view, um, first thing I want to do is I always kind of like light gray better. So I'm going to change the background to a light gray color. Um, and then what I want to do, just to make sure all my connections are working, um, I'm just going to stick a single label up here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and call it, I'm going to say round zero. Uh, that's something I know I'm going to eventually want. Um, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close down um, Interface Builder. Um, and I want to see if I've remembered to make all the connections or not. Um, looks like I have. Shows up, says round zero. We're ready to get started. That should have all been boring review to at this point. Like you should, you should look at this and be like, oh, you have to do this again. Um, but you should be getting really good at it. All right, so let's see what we want to make. Uh, the goal for today is that we're just going to make the, the view, um, and then we'll worry about uh, making all the connections and stuff tomorrow. So really what I want to do today is I just want to drag things onto Interface Builder. If you look to see what we've got on here, you can see that I've got a label um, in the top. Um, then I've got two buttons, uh, one that says Enter Scores, and then there's another one called Reset. It's hidden by the keyboard in this view. And then I'm going to make four text fields. Um, and then after that, I'm going to make, it's actually going to be eight text views. So these player one, two, three, four are actually text views. They are editable. And then the, the list of scores, there's actually four. So there's a big text view here. There's a big text view right there, right there, right there. Um, so let's start dragging some objects over. Um, and that's what we're going to try to do for today. Um, so we'll go ahead and make it in the zip file first, um, and then we'll start making the connections and stuff for it uh, manana. Cool, so dragging things onto this view. So let's go ahead and start by grabbing some buttons. So this button needs to say enter round scores. Um, enter round scores is a little lengthy. If you'd rather just say enter round score, that's fine with me too. Uh, we'll use our blue guidelines so that we don't violate the HIG. Then after that, we're going to make some text fields. Um, so the text fields, we're going to need to make four of them total. Uh, I'll start off by putting one over here. Um, if you hit Command-3, um, at 97 big, it's going to be too large. Um, I found that 64 works pretty well. Um, so I want it to be 64 big. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of copy and paste this um, three times. Um, so it's nice if you can if you know in advance some of the things that you might want to add to it. Um, so for example, I'd kind of like for there to be a placeholder that says score um, so that uh, people know what, what this thing is used for. Um, other things that since we're typing in scores between different rounds, we probably just want to clear off the score when editing begins. So I'll go ahead and say clear off the score when editing begins. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to switch the keyboard type. Um, by default we just want to show numbers. So we just want to show the number pad. Um, so that's something that we'd, we'd like to do there. Um, so now that we've made some of those basic changes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the option key um, and I'm going to drag this thing over. Um, and I'm going to make a grand total of uh, four of them. So one for each uh, player's score information. Next thing I want to do is I want to start go ahead and going ahead to create some text views. Um, so a text view you can see can be multi-line text. Uh, for now, um, I really just want one line of text. Um, and what I want to do is I want to make it just big enough to see that one line um, and look good. Other things you can do is you can change the color. So I'm going to hit Command-1 to go to this first screen. And I'm going to make the color, I don't know, something blue. Oops. I didn't mean to change the text color. Uh, how about I put that back to black? And then I change the background color. And we'll just kind of make it, uh, yeah, we'll make it blue or something like that. Oh, too dark. Maybe a cyan. Um, you can pick whatever color you like, right? Like there's no, there's, there's, there's nothing magic to uh, pick in certain colors. Um, I'll pick a slightly darker blue. Another trick that you can use in this version of um, Interface Builder is you can hold down Command um, and then hit the minus key and it'll change the font for you, which is nice. Um, so it's a neat little, uh, neat little trick that you've uh, got. You could also get there by saying font, uh, bigger, smaller. Um, so once you've got the font where you want it, um, I'll go ahead and say that that's good enough. Um, I'll just go ahead and put it right below the score. Um, another thing that we did on this is we intentionally left it editable. Um, so we've got an editable text view here. Um, then I'm going to drag out a few more. Um, looks like um, I kind of want to make it a little wider because I'd like for it to kind of appear to be one solid block. Um, so I'm going to make some of these a little wider just to make it appear to be one solid block. And then, of course, I want these to say player 2, 3, and 4. Cool. So we've got those set up the way we want. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to drag over um, the score sheets. So let's go ahead and make a score tally column. And this should be wide enough. Uh, let's make it just as big as the player object. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to start it off saying zero. And I think it'd look better if it was centered up. Um, and then you can change to change the color if you like. Um, I mean, white's fine. Um, but if you wanted to, you could certainly pick a, a slightly different color. I'll give it just a little gray tint. Um, that really didn't do anything noticeable at all. Um, whatever you want to do, right? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this fairly low, but there's going to be a button down here, so I'm going to stop um, stop a little bit short. Just so I know how short to stop, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, add the button right now. And so I want to put the button at the bottom corner um, and it's going to be saying reset scores and then I'll make this match up to the bottom really nicely there and then you can kind of get it I'm going to make it a little closer than they recommend just to kind of make it look continuous cool so um, 
Now we're ready to copy four of these things over. Uh, one thing I forgot before is we don't want the user to edit this, so I do not want it editable, so I'm going to uncheck editable. Um, so now it won't uh, be editable because uh, this is for display purposes only. And so what we want to do is we want to drag over a couple of these. So I'm just holding down the option key uh, and dragging them along. Cool. So now we've got a, a nice looking, reasonably well formatted um, interface that follows the HIG. Um, we've got all of our different objects in the different places. Uh, what I'd like to end with is I'd like to just run it um, and make sure it's working. Um, and then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll start hooking it up. So some things that should happen already for you magically, you can click the buttons, but they don't do anything. Um, you can click in the score regions, um, and they should bring up a numeric keypad. Uh, right now there's no way to make them go away. You should be able to click into the text fields, um, and you should be able to change things here. Um, I just realized I should probably have made it uh, centered, um, so I'm going to go back and fix that real quick. Um, and so if you've only got a two-player game, you know, you could, you could remove the names. Um, so there's no way to make the keyboard go away at present because nobody resigns first responder. Uh, but you can see that things are, uh, things are up and working. It didn't like Christy. It doesn't like my wife's name. Cool. So before I shut down, um, I'm going to go ahead and make those player ones centered. Um, and then I should be all set. Since I forgot to do it before, uh, now I've got to do it four times. Easy enough. Um, cool. So it looks good. Uh, shut her down. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come back here tomorrow uh, and we're going to finish this up. Uh, but I figured that you've probably had just about enough for, uh, for one day. Cool. So see you tomorrow. Uh, we're going to come back and we're going to finish up Scorekeeper. Take it easy.